Safety comes from the Greek word Stephanos, which means crown. So I went into the Hebrew, and my Hebrew name is Katril, which means my crown is God. My middle name is Lynn, which is Greek derived, which means a lake, a body of water. In Hebrew, it's Revival, R E V I V A, which means do or rain. Now they get to ponder on that. You know, a body of water can be a reservoir. A reservoir. I want to be a reservoir for God's glory. Because my crown is God. Amen. Amen. Pastor B. His name in Hebrew, am I echoing? Because I hear it gets bad. You need to turn it down or something because it's just like, I can hear it. Maybe turn it Pastor B's name. <clears throat> yeah, that's bad. Pastor B's name. Betzalel. That's his Hebrew name. And it means in the shadow of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide. Amen. Amen. So I encourage you, and if you need help, David, I'll be glad to help you. It's still doing it. Let me take this off and use a handheld. Right. Still work. Go ahead. Okay. Is that good? Yeah. Yeah. Hold on. <coughs> so we're going back into Chronicles again to the prime J days. First Chronicles chapter four. Verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> First Chronicles chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. <clears throat> it says, And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. Father God, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for your spirit that's here with us today, Father. And Father, I just ask that you use me, your willing vessel, Father, to bring forth this message as you've downloaded it into me, Father. Help us today, Father God. Bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory, Father. Keep your hand of protection upon us. Keep us from evil so that it will not grieve us, Father. I give you all the glory. I give you all the praise. But hide me behind your cross, Jesus. Strip me of me. And Holy Spirit, speak through me today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <clears throat> so, so far we learned that this is the story of Jabez's life summed up in two verses, amen? amen? What started out bad, what the enemy wanted to use to destroy him, God turned it around. Amen. And Jabez became an honorable man. And we learned to be honorable, you had to give honor, amen? amen. So we also learned so far, we've studied honor, honor and we've studied the word blessed, what it really means to be blessed. Blessing's not money in your pocket. Food on your table. Blessing is God. Son, you are mine and you are accepted. Amen? Amen. So today we're going to start with enlarge my coast. <clears throat> and this is actually how I ended up in this study. It's because God spoke the word boundaries to me. 
just the word boundary. So I begin to study, and whenever he speaks a word, I will look up every word, every scripture that's got that word in it. It might, sometimes it takes me a while. Sometimes it automatically comes to me. But as I was looking up the word boundaries, I ran into this prayer. So the word coast, Jabez prayed, enlarge my coast. It's a Hebrew word, gabol, which is a twisted cord that is by implication of boundaries. By extension, the land enclosed, a border, bound, coast, great, landmark, limit, quarter, and space. Amen? So that was my word boundaries, but I also picked up a few other, the word limit. So boundaries, a boundary is a dividing line. Geographically, it makes the end of one property or jurisdiction and the beginning of the other. Amen? So anytime you purchase a home that's got land with it, the first thing you should do is get it surveyed. Because landmarks move. Landmarks move. So you gotta find out where is the boundaries of my property. This is where my neighbor can't say I own this, and this is where I can't say I own that. Amen? It separates us. <laughs> Just like law enforcement. Their jurisdiction, they have boundaries. A city cop can't just go anywhere in Estill County and make an arrest. A county cop just can't go anywhere in the state of Kentucky and make an arrest. Amen. They have jurisdictions. They have borders that they have to keep in mind. Amen? Relationships should have boundaries. Amen. Come on. Relationships, boundaries protect our identity. In our marriage, we may be raising our children, our friendships, our jobs. We should have boundaries. At work, we set boundaries. We set limits. This is the time I'm going to work, and after that, I'm going home. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. We won't just steal any old thing, right? When it comes to our jobs. <laughs> See, a boundary create, creates necessary space between individuals, yeah. and healthy boundaries define expectations and show respect for others. You know what to expect from me. I know what to expect from you. And I'll be glad to tell you what line we do and will not cross when it comes to my life. Amen. We don't just let anybody come in and say, Morgan, you need to move your kitchen table over here. <laughs> yeah. Now, if I come in your house, being your pastor, and I know you love me, and I love you, and I look at you and say, Morgan, I don't like the way you've got this set up. We need to rearrange it. Shut up, no. No, it's not. <laughs> Some other in laws think it's their job. Yeah. But they're stepping a boundary. They're, they're crossing a boundary. Uh -huh. They're crossing a the boundary. They're trying to make you out to set up your home like they want it done. That's not how it works. And we'll fight that, won't we? We'll fight that. And God gives us an identity. He sets boundaries with the Word of God. You don't know that. You don't say that. You don't do that. But yet, we will stand there with those boundaries that God has created for our spiritual lives and we'll let the enemy march right on in. Come on, Lord. March right on in. Come on. And destroy what God has set up. He gives us specific instructions. Specific. His plan is a nose on your face, girl. Plan is a nose on your face. Don't talk about others. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't steal. Don't look upon other women. If you're a married man, don't look upon other men. If you're a married woman. But yet, we let the enemy create his own boundaries in our life and march right on in where he was never allowed to be with to begin with. Amen? Amen. And we don't talk nothing about it. We have to teach our children boundaries. You can tell a child that's not been taught any boundaries as it gets older. Amen. It has no respect for anybody. Come on. Amen. Discipline is not a bad word. I was disciplined daily. Oh. Look at me, I lived. <laughs> I mean, we had to teach right from wrong. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
See, here's the thing. Let God show me this. The more it is that I'm obedient to his boundaries that he set in my life, the greater he can use me. Because here's this word again. That's a bad word in a lot of Christian vocabulary that's at the worst in there. Amen. We'll surrender to the enemy. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, that's your we will. Come on. We'll surrender to the enemy a whole lot faster than we'll surrender to God. Amen. We'll be obedient to what the devil says out of before we'll be obedient to what God is telling us. What the Holy Spirit is, is telling us. We'll walk where he said don't go. Just because the enemy made it look better. And here's the reason why. It's self-control. Self-control. This is why our flesh overrides our spirit man. Self-control. It's the fruit of the spirit. It's the fruit of the spirit. Self-control. And see what Jabez was praying when he said, Enlarge my coast. He wasn't praying for more land in his name yet. He wasn't praying for more vehicles. He wasn't praying for more money. He was praying, use me more. When he said, enlarge my house, he's saying, how sin me where you wouldn't let me go before. Put your hand upon me, God. Sin me where I wasn't allowed to go before. Show me more. Show me more of who you are. Show me more of who I am in you. Enlarge my coast. Let me know, Lord. Let me know who I am and who you are. He wasn't talking about Snowden taking that landmark to his property and moving it out. Some more feet. Mm -mm. He was saying, that person over there, God, where I've never been to go before. I've never been allowed to go there before to reach that person. Use me. Use me. Here I am, Lord. Send me. Send me. Your blessing is upon my life now, Lord. I know your blessing is upon me. So use me to increase your kingdom. Not my land, but your kingdom. Amen. He was praying about his spiritual boundaries. You see, the more we know, the stronger we become when we get some self-control about us. See, self-control will cause you to go sit in your friend's living room and even though you don't like how she's decorated, <laughs> you respect that. Now, I'm not saying that because I don't like why y'all decorate your houses, okay? I'm just using it as an example. Because like I said, that's your mother-in-law's dog. That's a medium mother-in-law. I had one at one time. Who come into my house and started pointing her finger and I pointed my finger and I said, see that door, see your way out of it. Because there's boundaries when it comes to my home. Amen? Your mother-in-law, I had nothing to care less what I hang on my wall. Amen? And I hope that I'm the kind of mother-in-law that respects because I've had to chew my tongue off sometimes. I've had to chew my tongue off sometimes. But here's the thing. There comes a point in time when you have to be accountable for your own actions. We can teach them, Harold. And they might look like they're living like hell right now. And they might be living like hell right now. But the day's coming. The day's coming. He came for me. He came for you all. He's coming for them. So what we had to do is respect that. Amen. Notice that boundary that God set. And be the light that he's told us to be. Amen? Amen. Does that make sense? Amen. Amen. Why don't we go to Galatians 5.22. It says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Temperance is self-control. And can I tell you right now, we struggle with that one more than we do with anything. We struggle with that one more than we do with anything. Because if somebody does something to one you love, or say something, one you love. Come on. It's all I'm going to be home. I lose all self-control. 
Can I again your face? And that's not what the Word of God says. It says we must have self-control. So mark that down, highlight it, put it in capital letters, all caps, with exclamation marks. Get you some self-control. <clears throat> all right, we're going to move on now. That thy hand might be with me. Tell me the Psalms 73, Lord. 73, 23. Nevertheless, I am continually with thee. Thou hast holden me by my right hand. So we're going to break this scripture down real quick. The word right in Hebrew is yamin. Y-A-M-I-Y-N. And it means stronger, more dexterous, dominant. The word hand is Y-A-D, yad, which means power. So when we read this, nevertheless, I'm continually with thee. Thou has holding me by my right hand. Thou has holding me by your strongest, by your strength, by everything that you've got, God, with your power. Yes, Did I just mean you love your holy hand? Yeah. It means there's power in that, amen? Yeah. Tell me to Isaiah 41 again, Pastor Larry's favorite verse. It says, Fear thou not. For I hate thee, be not, be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yeah, I will help thee. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. What is that saying to you? Let's figure it out. Let's break it down. The word help, the Hebrew word is azar, A-Z-A-R. It means to surround, to protect, and to able. To enable, I mean, I'm sorry. <clears throat> the word uphold is to mock. It means to sustain, to keep, to hold up, to retrain, to stay up. So what God is telling us in these verses, and what Jabez was crying out for, is God lift me up. Because God, when your hand lifts me up, ain't no devil in hell, ain't no demon in hell can take me because you will not let go. The reason why the enemy gets a hold of us and pulls us out of that hand of protection, that hand of power, is self-control. Amen. 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 We liked it. We didn't we, we stay in on those boundaries that God set around our life. He says he lifts us up and sees us in heavenly places. What does that mean to you? He lifts us up. <coughs> when he says that song, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his power. He's got the whole world in his strength. The fact of the matter is, is that we don't surrender. We don't surrender ourselves. We don't surrender all of us to him so that he can hold us. Because if God lifts you up, honey, you lift it up. Man will lift you up. Man will lift you up. And what happens when man lifts you up? But honey, when God, when that big hand of God gets down there and he scoops you up and he lifts you up here and he's looking at the devil saying, Nana, Nana, Boo Boo, you can't have her. You can't have her. You can't reach her where I've got her. Amen. Come on, somebody. So that's what Jabez was saying. God, I want you to use me. I want you to use me to increase your kingdom. I want you to put your hand down here. I want you to pick me up and hold me and keep me up where the enemy can't come near me. The word for sake. Take me to Deuteronomy 31. I'm going to get ahead of myself. Sorry, guys. <laughs> and the Lord, he is that Doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. He's going to go before you, Harold. He's always with you, Jeff. He ain't going to fail you. He ain't going to fail you. He might fail him. Come on. The word fail is rotha. He may slack it, abate, cease, draw away, faint, be weak, or feeble. Let down. Let down. What do you say? I got you in my hand. I ain't gonna let you down. I ain't gonna let you down. Amen. The word forsake is azab, a z a b, which means to loosen, to relinquish, to permit, or to leave. 
start it again. I'm not going to listen to my grandfather yet. I'm not going to listen to my grandfather. I've got you in my hand. I won't permit the enemy to come near you. I won't permit it. I got you right here. The enemy's down here. Amen. I won't leave you. Fear not. Fear not. Jabez is also praised for God to keep him from evil. The word evil means bad, naturally or supernaturally. You know, we can create evil for ourselves. We don't like to self control. Come on. We make our own choices. Come on. God gave us free will Amen. to make our own choices. And sometimes these things that happen in our life is a result of bad choices. It's a result of bad choices. You'll answer for those choices. You will. You'll answer for your choices. Might not be you. Might be your children. But you can turn it around. You can turn it around by saying, God, I know I messed up. But don't let my baby suffer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Amen. You see, when Jabez began to pray this prayer, he didn't label. There was some limits that were placed on his life. Yeah. We place limits on our life. We limit what God can do for us. And how God can use us. Because we're not willing to surrender. We want the glory. We don't want to put the work in. The work don't get you to heaven. But if you're at your corner and God use me, here I am. If you try to be like Isaiah and say, here I am, Lord. And he's giving you a job to do. But you're not willing to give up something to do that job. You've got a problem. Amen. You're setting boundaries that God didn't intend to be set. You're putting a limit over your head. You're putting a ceiling. It's time to break through those ceilings. It's time to rip the roof off. Remember when they tore the roof off and they let the little man down to Jesus so that he can heal him. It's time to get rid of the limits. It's time to let God be God. It's time to let him do what he needs to do in our lives. Amen. Amen. Keep me from evil. That it may not grieve me. What's he talking about? What's he talking about? The word grieve. Axav. A-T-S-A-V. <clears throat> Properly to carve. That is to fabricate. Or fashion. To wrong. Pain or anger. Don't let evil come near me. That it will begin to change me into somebody that you didn't intend for me to do. There's boundaries around my life. You place boundaries around my life. You surveyed me with the word of God. And you told me not to go there. Not to go there. Not to let that come near me. So, Father, with your hand, with your hand of strength, with your hand of protection, you keep the enemy at bay. You show him where the boundary is. You take across this. There's a bloodline that he can't cross. But when he comes and he puts the pressure on him. Oh, my buckle. You give me a headache, I'm going to preach anyway. You give me an AFib, I'm going to preach anyway. You make my legs smell, I'm going to preach anyway. Hold up, pay her. I'm going to do what God told me to do. You walk away from me, I'm going to preach anyway. You walk away from me, I'm going to serve anyway. You walk away from me, I'm still going to scream from the rooftop. Prepare the way. The Lord is coming. Prepare the way. Jesus is on his way. Yeah. Quit worrying about what they said. You see, worrying about what people have to say about you puts a limit on your life. He puts a limit on the calling that God has placed on you. On your assignment. Amen. It's time to break through the limits. It's time to break through the ceilings. It's time to be let God be God. Amen. Amen. You cried. I've heard you. Here I am, Lord. See me. God's been cleaning tables. He's been cleaning out closets. He's been opening the windows and shining the light on those things that we don't need. And when we let go of all that, he says, all right. Do you understand the time is now? He's warned. He's lit it up. He's turned it over. He's tore the ceiling off. He says, now, now what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I feel this in my bones. I feel this in my bones. 
that everything they said about being in prison worship, that everything they said about the pastors and the leadership of this church, everything they said about you because you sit in this pew, they got to eat their words, Nick Holly. They got to eat their words because God is raising up a statement and he said, I'm going to use them. I'm going to use them that stood. I'm going to use them that clean. I'm going to use them that allowed me to flip their tables. God bless this vehicle. I've done it. But I need this vehicle to get me from here to there. But what if I sell that vehicle? We've got to start praying for the right things. Remember Jabez. He prayed to the right person. He prayed to God. He asked for the right things. He asked for his blessing, his hand of protection to keep him from evil, to use him for his glory. Then God was pleased. And because God was pleased, 
He granted it to him. Not what he asked for, not what he needed, what he requested. What are your requisitions for the God? The, the God of this world, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, Isaac, my God, your God, Jesus, his Father. What are you requesting from him? He says any good father will not withhold any good thing from his children. We are his children. We are his children. You see, while a lot of ministers in our church, like some of us spoke today, they're at each other's throats. Well, you see them. And the Bible says, while they're arguing over scripture, thousands are dying and going to hell. Amen. While they're arguing over why you didn't show up for my revival, thousands Come are going to hell. Come on. While you're too busy nitpicking and tearing apart, you know who a fault finder is? Satan. Amen. He's the fault Amen. finder. So if you're a fault finder, then he's working in you, you need to get deliverance. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We can yeah. sit here, Morgan, and pick each other apart. Come on, preach. Preach, Pastor. Remember when you said, and remember when you crossed your eyes, and remember you, when you said that? We could do that all day long. We could. But you know what? If we've got the Spirit inside of us, and we look at each other, and if we're looking through the eyes that Jesus looked through, I've got compassion for you. I don't care what you said. i got compassion for you. I've got love for you. And what can change things, guys? Prayer. You don't like the way I preach? Pray about it. You don't like the way Pastor B preaches? Pray about it. You don't like what the worship thing does? Pray about it. Let's start getting on our knees. Let's start getting on our knees. Instead of getting on the phone or getting on Facebook. Or getting sitting around moaning and complaining about what ain't going right and what you want to say. Honey, let me tell you something. God's in it. You ain't going to destroy it. Come on. Amen. You might hold it back. But you might find yourself on the outside with him. I was once on the outside with him. But I'm not that anymore. I'm not that same person. I can't walk around with my feelings on my sleeves. Come on. Amen. I can't walk around with my feelings. I'm a messenger of God. I've been called to preach his word. They rejected Jesus. Amen. Do you know rejection is the number one thing that will destroy a pastor Come on. or a preacher? But not this pastor and this preacher. I'm accepted by God. Amen. The enemy rejects me. And thank God that he does. Because if he accepted me, I'd be on my way to hell. So just keep that in mind. I read something on Facebook the other day that says, if they say you're worthless, mm -hmm. hug them because they're blind. Mm -hmm. Tell them you're sorry that they're blind. Come on. God don't make mistakes, guys. Amen. He don't make mistakes. So don't let evil come near me. That it might grieve me. That it will cause me to become something that I wouldn't fabricate me to form something that I'm all right. Means to create, the one not create, but to put together. These things that people say, if we take hold of it, and when we look at our children and they're out here running our hell, and we say things like, this looks hopeless, should not be in our vocabulary. Should not be in our vocabulary. Means there's hope in Jesus. There's always hope in Jesus. Amen. Whenever Pastor B had come out of the prayer closet about the tent revivals that God spoke to him to have, these were the verses that he come up come out with. Yeah. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't dig in these verses. I thought, really? That's what God gave him tonight. Glory, hallelujah. The wrong attitude, right? The wrong attitude. Because I could have already been past this point if I had just took it upon myself to sit down with the word of God and say, God, what are you telling my husband? I'm sure he knows. What, do you, what, is, what does this mean for us as a congregation? What does this mean for us as a ministry? So let's read it. Isaiah 54, 2 and 3, it says, Enlarge the place of thy tent, and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, 
Lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy stakes. Don't hold back. That's what that means. Don't hold back. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. What does that say to you? What does that say to you, reading it river worship? That saying, occupy the land. I'm going to break you forth over here. I'm going to break you forth over there. Your offspring is going to go with you, and you're going to change this place for the kingdom of God. But he says, strengthen my cords. What does that mean? Who's the cord? Who's our anchor? Strengthen your faith in Jesus. Strengthen your faith in Jesus. Here's the thing. I learned about faith. Now, have I learned everything? No. I've scratched a little bit. And I've realized that when it comes to faith, the enemy really, really wants to destroy that. Come on. Because whenever David was in the hospital, whenever Pastor Larry was in the hospital, and we were praying, and nothing happened. And the enemy began, began to tear me down. I don't know who you think you are. You can't even pray for your own daddy. But see, what I didn't realize in that situation and in that time was that I can't fight your will. I can't fight my daddy's will. He came to a place in his life where he was done. Yeah, yeah. And he wanted to go on home and be with God. Yeah, yeah. Well, how did you know that, Pastor? I tell you how I know that. I was in his office. Sam used to plunder through his stuff. He called me the plunderer. They get back there plundering through my stuff again. I was just trying to learn more. Yeah. I was being nosy, yes. But I was trying to learn more. Because Daddy typed out all these sermons. And he kept them in a binder. He had notes stuff everywhere, so I go back there and I, what's happening? <laughs> and yes, I, I got it from my, my Jenny baby. She was nosy. She knew everything about us. And I pulled out this piece of paper, which was a DNR that he was signed. And those of you who don't know what that means, that means do not resuscitate. If his heart stopped, we would have let him go. And I said, Dad, what is, what is this? They said, what do you mean? What is that? I said, what is this DNR? Why are you even signing the DNR? He said, I'm trying to make it to heaven. Don't you dare stop me. <laughs> so did I fight his will? Yes, I did. Because I wanted him back with me. And the enemy used that. Don't you be laying your hands on nobody. God don't hear you when you pray. So here's what you have to do to increase your faith. You've got to do something to increase it. And God is dealing with you to lay hands on somebody. And you sit there in your seat because the enemy's whispering in your ear saying, you done this. But you'd already asked forgiveness for that. We all mess up, church. God says, go lay hands on Brother Snowden and tell him this. And the enemy says, well, you ain't hearing from God. <laughs> What are you doing to your faith? It's not existent. If you sit there in your seat, but if you rise up, you get up out of that seat, and you walk over there, too, and you lay hands on Snowden, and you speak what the Holy Spirit tells you to speak. And this is how that works, too. Don't sit around waiting for him to confirm by two or three other people. If he says, go and say this, go and say this, and when you open your mouth, Something takes over. Something takes over. It's not even you anymore, Harold. You're speaking. The Holy Spirit is in your mouth. He's using your tongue. He's using your lips. But we sit and we question. Is that you, God? How's your man come to me this morning? He said, you want to tag him with me Wednesday night? I'm like, you sure you want to do that? He's like, yeah, let's do this. We've got to stop. <laughs> if we're going to do what God has called us to do, Aaron, if we want to see God's blessings on our life, we've got to get up and go. You don't want butts in the pews. He wants boots on the ground. Amen. He wants you to give a little more of you. And he's going to increase your territory. The more of you you give to him, not to the world. 
to him. In return, you want to see things change. You want to see things change. I had all these plans Saturday. No, Friday. Friday. That I had to do. And y'all know, you ready with a toddler. Don't make things easy. And here she comes at 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm here, Mimi. And I'm like, well, all right. But you know what? I gave up myself. And I said, God, this is me and her today. Please allow me to get some things done that I need to get done. And guess what? I got those things done. And I got a blessing in return. Amen. So get on your feet. We're going to pray this prayer. If you're ready, are you ready to pray this prayer? Are you ready for your name to be a spiritual pathway to others? Are you ready for God's hand, his blessings, and his protection? Are you ready? Are you ready for boots on the ground? Are you ready to occupy the land? Do we get the glory out of it? No. Do you want to see it? Just like Brother Snowden tossed it on the prayer page. Do you want to see it, believer? Do you want to see it here? Do you want to see it set free? Do you want to see it saved? Yes. Yeah. Do you want to walk around with signs and wonders following you? Or do you want to just put it things down to your and continue to fight and scratch? Then let's pray this prayer. Y'all repeat after me. Where are we at? <laughs> oh, Jesus. My God. My God. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Enlarge my coast, Lord. Enlarge my coast. So that I can increase your kingdom. So that I can increase your kingdom. Not my glory, Lord. Not my glory, Lord. But your glory, Lord. But your glory, Lord. Lord, take your hand. And lift me up, Father. And keep me from evil. So that it won't grieve me. So that it won't change me. Remind me of my boundaries. And let me know who I am. In you, God. Teach me your ways. Order my footsteps. And be with me always. In the name of Jesus, we pray. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm done. Did y'all learn anything? Yes. It's time to take off those labels. It's time to tear off the roof. Amen. Amen. It's time to lay hands on the sick and watch them recover. And stop doubting ourselves. Yeah. Because when we're, doubting, when we're doing that, we're doubting God. Amen. 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 Cards full.